about 300 metres, they cross a road uh, which has been turfed over and they start a uphill climb. Steve Jones of Wales, 4 4 in the centre of the shot. Wales with two good athletes in this. Also uh, with him, he's got the steeplechaser, Roger Hackney, who's finished fourth in the National Cross Country Championship to lead all the shots to the gold medal. Those are the two Melshmen. Orthman of uh, West Germany, well up with the leaders. And also in there somewhere, John Tracy of Ireland, who's won the title twice. And indeed, in this race, we've got the last five champions. Kadir, Craig Verdi, Virgin, United States, John Tracy, Leon Schatz of Belgium, and Lopez of Portugal. Well, there's the stiff hill that they reach just beyond the 300 meter mark and start to climb away. And here now, Ron Pickman. Well, if you're looking for some familiar faces, the England team running in their all-white strip, we've already seen David Clark up at the front running 109. Kevin Forster wears 110. He's just gone through. There he is, 110. 249 is beginning to show, but the other, Steve Harris wears 111. David Lewis, 113. Tony Milosorov, 115. Phil O'Brien, 116. Robert Treadwell, who would enjoy the mud, 117. And Carl Harrison, 118. So that's the Ortman with the cap, one tiny Ethiopian who's uh, leading the charge. There's a New Zealand one up. That's Gurma, that's uh, the Ethiopian. And 110 showing very well, Kevin Forster. 133, Paul Allais of France. And you can see some familiar Ethiopian faces in that pack. And it'll take a little sorting out. 32 countries represented. 228 runners, they'll run six laps, it's seven and a half miles. They'll be on this course for about 35 minutes in this senior race. And the favorite teams, Ethiopia, Belgium, Portugal, the United States, and hopefully England. Lock of Holland leading and Dave Clark, second of the National Cross Country Championship, and Kevin Foster from Saltwell, not far away from Gateshead, in third place. So England with two and three at the moment for these very early days. And Clark deciding to attack straight away. Now this is a short, sharp hill. They go right-handed, but then the hill doesn't finish. It then goes gradually uphill, and really when they get to laps five and six, they run this six, uh, this uh, lap six times, a total of 12,000 meters, seven and a half miles, this becomes very testing indeed. And certainly, this is a truer test of cross country than most international courses we've seen recently. Coming downhill here, the awkward part is they're running across the line of the land. Brendan Foster. Well, they've all become students of this course. They've been running around it for almost a week now, and they've decided they know where the hard parts are, they know where the body parts are. But what usually happens is the really experienced distance runners will take their time. They won't join the leading pack until they've run about a lap because usually in this race, the pace is far too quick early on. And what usually happens is the early leaders finally end their way way back in the 30s or 40s or even behind that. So the, the really class distance runners will be expecting to start showing in, in about a, another half a lap of time. And Dave Clark from England, he's obviously decided he's gonna try and make some impact here but he's, he's unnecessarily stretching them. I don't think he should be doing this yet. I think he should be taking his time and finding his way around the course because he's exposed at the front, and unless he's going to go to a runaway victory, then uh, he's no need to be in the front at this point. Well, the sun is shining on the course, and it's helped dry it out. We had heavy rain about two nights ago, but the, uh, the European teams were saying this is a typical British course. You've put your hills in, you've got your mud, and normally the international course is a flat race course with man-made obstacles. Dave Clark still looking good up in the front there, but no real sign of Ethiopian dominance, which uh, when they ran it here last year, they already had half a dozen way up in the front. They're looking there, one, two, two, one, two, three. That's the Ethiopians in the green vests uh, coming around with red bottles. One, two, two is Bulti and De Bailey is there as well and Germa. As you see the athletes go through the shot, the importance of a fast start is stressed there because they've got an awful lot of running to do to get up there with the leaders. And certainly the Americans are showing they've got 4 2 7 up there, Pat Porter, their champion, and 4 2 5, who's Hunt. Pierre Levis of France wearing 1 3 8 right up with them too. But Dave Clark still leading and still driving. Levis in second place. And the time for the first mile on this uphill. Well, uphill and down dale, but it's very, very undulating, was 4 minutes 43 seconds. Actually, that time of the mile is very, very quick. That's just outside world record pace for 10,000 metres on a track. So what I was saying earlier about the, the more experienced distance runners, the likes of Salazar and Kadir, you can see there, at the moment they're around about 
they ran about 15th place Salazar just come through in the, in the black tights there he was a little bit scared about the weather here but um, the more the more experienced boys are moving through the field and it's early days yet they're just about to complete one of the six laps so the team the team race and the individual race will start to begin to sort itself out from now on Actually, Tom Hunt, an interesting athlete to look for, number 425. He's only 24, but he won the uh, 1977 Junior Championship. 427, the American champion, Porter. 138 is Levis. Dave Clark wearing 109. 440 showing there is Steve Jones of Wales, the RAF champion, and believed to be a magnificent form. Kevin Foster right up to the leaders as well. Well, just to say that this English team have been written down a bit, but... Uh, Historically, England have only twice been out of the first three in the men's event. In 73, when they were fifth, and in 81, when they were sixth. They've always had a marvellous tradition. You can see the English rows being carried on a few chests there. It's simply that, although this started off uh, as uh, being a home nations championship and then expanded to Europe, it now has grown to a worldwide event. It's been adopted by the International Amateur Athletic Federation, and with 32 countries taking part, and the African nations taking cross-country much more seriously than they've ever done before. It's becoming more and more a truly international event. And Gateshead are staging a truly international event, and they're to be congratulated on the way that they've organized this, because it really has been superb. The Americans seem to be uh, packing quite well. The Ethiopians, after the first two or three that we saw going through, are in the first 20. Uh, it's hard to find the rest of their placing athletes. They're gradually moving through the field, uh, but the uh, fascinating thing about the Ethiopians is their approach to the whole thing. They arrived here on Friday, immediately went on the course and ran a time trial to choose their team. And it was pretty difficult as well. Uh, they'd got one to drop, they brought ten athletes, and in fact they made them race on Friday to decide who should be dropped. Talking about them doing a time trial like that, it's, it, it's un very, very unusual. I mean, European runners can hardly understand the way they approach their thing, but it doesn't really seem to do them any harm at all. And in fact, I was speaking with Mirch Yifta last night, the, the Olympic 5 and 10,000 meter champion, and he was telling me he's not as fit as he had been, but this is the strongest Ethiopian team he's ever known. This is the best team he's ever been part of, and he said, really, the only reason I'm here is to help Ethiopia collect the team title for the third time in our third attempt. Little man on the right there in blue, Carlos Lopez. First in 1976, 36 years of age now. Silver in the 1976 Olympic Games at 10,000 metres and still good enough to be fourth in Athens at last year's European Championships at 10,000 metres. There he is taking the lead. Carlos Lopez in the pale blue of Portugal. And Salazar and Castello are together. And uh, 15 Australian wearing uh, with the moustache. Zalazar wearing the black tights. The Cuban-born American, undefeated at Marathon, really wants to win this international race. Recognized as one of the world's great hard men of distance running, and he wants to win this badly. But good to see David Clark taking up the running with Europe's best. Well, yes, it's nice to see David Clark. He's settled down now, and he's in a much more comfortable state than he was earlier. Carlos Lopez, the 76 Euro Olympic silver medalist for 10,000 meters. Dave Clark is in there, David Taylor, the Irishman, who, who's won most of his races since about October of this year, and I've got a sneaking fancy as an outsider in this, in this event. I've just noticed in about fifth place in the blue vest, the Italian Alberto Cova, who won the, who won the European 10,000 meters. So the good boys are starting to get there. On the outside, Alberto Salazar wearing the black tights, and right next to him is uh, his great rival, Rob Di Castella. But as we were talking earlier about the Ethiopians, they're starting to move through gradually. They know exactly what kind of pace they're going to need on this course. And there are, there are four of them in the leading pack there, as well as, as well as Kevin Foster, whose wife had a baby last Wednesday or Thursday, and who's a local boy, and he's in about eighth place as the leading Englishman here. And Rob Di Castella, who's, as I say, been studying on the course, he's, he knows exactly how he wants to run here, and he's just taking his time about a lap and a half to move with the leaders, and that's the best way to do it. John Andrews of Australia is right up there with the leaders as well, but uh, there's a very impressive race developing now. Just looking through that uh, bunch of vests, and it's the Americans who are showing. They've got three up there, Hunt, Pat Porter, and Salazar. 
Lopez in the all blue of Portugal. One, two, three is the Dabella of Kenya, of, um, of Ethiopia, rather. Uh, one, two, two, just going through the shot. Another Ethiopian. Uh, Bulti. And Kadir, the champion, actually, is not showing as yet. We've tried to track him back, but we reckon he's uh, somewhere way back around 50. As I was just going to say, we've been looking for the matchstick man, Kadir. We think he's about 50th. We think he's the sixth Ethiopian. So that means they've got six scoring men in the first 50 and must clearly be leading in the team race. Although we expected them to pack together. They enjoy their own company. They enjoy running the company. Yift has gone through shot, who's uh, the uh, eternal 40 years of age. There he is, Mirich Yifta, double Olympic champion, absolutely incredible. And Yifta is at the tail end of the Ethiopian team, so they're still up there as far as the team race is concerned. But it's much closer and much wide open, much more open than we thought it would be. The field has really stretched out now. Uh, looking back from the leader to the tail ender, there must be a gap now of some. 600 meters. Australians have got one or two forward, but uh, nothing like the six they require of their nine athletes. Di Costello going through, and Salazar, the uh, world's number one marathon runner, following him. And the Americans with three and ten there. 427, Pat Porter, their champion. 185 is Cobra, 293 is Lopez, uh, 123 is Dabele of Ethiopia, 428 is Salazar, another uh, Portuguese athlete going through there, 289 as Canario, and the Portuguese too have got quite a number of athletes up in these early stages. Coming round now to complete the second lap and going out into the country for th the third time. And remember, it's six laps before they turn into the finishing final. Talking about the team race, everyone was giving it to Ethiopia without a run, actually, and, and it doesn't seem to be working out to their advantage so far. Maybe they're not used to the, the cold wind that's blowing here. Maybe they don't like the mud too much, because I noticed they seem to be running to the outside on the court. Moving through, they are running well, but I think team-wise, they're definitely going to have a race on. They, there we see the lowest point of the course, which is the, really the muddiest, that's the toughest part. You'll notice some of the athletes are keeping to the right outside so that they don't have to run right through the middle of the mud. But, but I would think that anyone who's got any serious intentions of trying to land this, this individual title has got to be in that leading group now. And I notice just on the edge of the group, again in the black tights, Alberto Salazar, who has clear, Alberto was telling me he has clear plans for this race, and it's already going towards his plan. He said he would take his time to move to the leading group. That is obviously the best way to run because then you don't expend too much energy bursting early on. Alberto is in, on the outside and what he's decided is that he's gonna use bursting and surging tactics. Last year he felt he made a mistake and he kept the pace pretty pretty comfortable, pretty level all the way around. He felt that played to the advantage of Kadir particularly. But he felt it played advantage to the other athletes. But Salazar is moving there nicely and I would expect him to start showing up right in the front. Some unusual colours here. The reds all together. The Americans looking good because Pat Porter's up there 427. Thomas Hunt, a previous junior winner, 425. And of course we know that uh, Salazar wearing 428. So look for the Americans all in red. The Ethiopians there are two going through in the uh, in the green top and the red uh, shorts. And just for a word on how the team is going, here's Stuart's story. Well, with the Ethiopians with six, I make it, in the first 46, they must be now in the lead. The United States have got three men up front, as you've heard, but it's the next three which are getting some concern at the moment. But I think the Americans may well be holding second place in the team at the moment. Just to remind you that each team has nine members, six to score, and it's the position which the athlete finishes in the race which is added together. So if the, a team was to come one to six, then the maximum score would be 21. So it's the lowest score overall which gives the winning score in a cross-country race. But Ethiopia at the moment with uh, De Bailey leading, there he is, but one, two, three, with the green top and the red short, leading the Ethiopian team assault at the moment. But Dave Clark now of England leading the race. Now we've got a new man in second place in the picture for the first time in the last half mile, Boogie of Kenya, in the red shorts and white top. 
Um, also there, Debelli of uh, Ethiopia on the far side of the green vest. Lopez of the All Blue of Portugal. Uh, Porter, the American champion, on the near side of the All Red of America. And there in the picture, Prieto of Spain, also beginning to show. And they're beginning to break up slightly. Uh, Cova of Italy is there. Castella is there from Australia. And so too is Salazar running wide on the outside. So easy to spot in the uh, black tights and it is pretty cold out there at the moment we've had heavy rain earlier this afternoon so there's england there there's kenya there there's ethiopia there there's america there's spain there's portugal there's australia with two and the second australian i think is andrews also there for portugal is canario the portuguese have got a very strong team out they've also got another team mamidi and Adleto are both fine international uh, track runners and indeed uh, Mamidi of course holds the European 10,000 meter record so just looking at that bunch it's Mugi of Kenya leading Dave Clark of England in second place in third place De Belli of Ethiopia Lopez is four Porter America five Salazar America six Prieto of Spain in seventh place eighth is Costello of Australia and Nat Muir of Scotland going through in about 11th place and looks to be the uh, leading uh, Britain. Steve Jones is up with that group as well. Pat Porter, the American, is uh, one of the Americans who has the benefit of altitude training. He's based at Colorado at college there. He is the US cross-country champion. Uh, and so he being up there with Salazar at the moment, it's just what Salazar needed. Salazar wants to do battle. He regrets very much that Kader beat him on his run in last year. Salazar hates being beaten. He's dropped back to about sixth place at me. You can see him there with the black tights on. And really, he's been looking forward to this. And uh, Costello is about two places behind him. So the two greatest marathon runners in the world are together up there, together with a lot of the world's cream of 10,000 meter runners. And that's what's making it a marvelous race at the moment. In that leading group of 10, we've now got, I think, the serious contenders for the race. There's some of the men here who really think they can win. They really come here prepared to win. They've geared their training. They've probably eased up over the last week or so. They probably use speed work and interval work, whereas normally in the winter one wouldn't do that. But to win this event, you've got to be really sharp. You've got to be at your best. And there, as I said earlier, Alberto Salazar is now just taking his time. We're about halfway around, and the race is, the re race is really beginning to start now. And Alberto is moving right alongside his teammate, Pat Porter. He'll be delighted to see Porter there next to him because he does have a regard for the rest of the American team. I've just been doing a count back through the uh, athletes. It's very difficult to spot them all on the way through because behind the leaders, they're bunching. But it does look to me as if now, as they go out at about the halfway stage, the Americans are in front of Ethiopia. Difficult to check them all through, but uh, we reckon that is an approximate position as they reach halfway. Well, I think that the Ethiopians are just about doing something about it. Kadir coming up. He's moved through from 50th to about uh, 26th. And I think it's going to be very close. I think they've sensed that the Americans are packing much better than we thought they would. And I think they're just about doing something about it. And close. Craig Verging, one of the, uh, he's way back on the Americans, twice previous winner, 429 just going through the shot there. And I think there's a real battle hotting up as the Ethiopians sense that the Americans are packing better than they expected at this stage. Actually, interesting that uh, Craig Virgin, uh, twice uh, champion in this race, uh, he's had kidney trouble and is recovering uh, from that, uh, but he should be among their counters. Uh, we just uh, worked out that the Ethiopians have got six in 40 at the moment. That's Craig Virgin going through on the far side in the red of America, some way back, but possibly among their counters. But certainly the kidney trouble has been very damaging indeed. I think, I think he's done really well, Craig Virgin, to get back from that illness, and he, he would be, it would be a delight to him and the rest of the American team if they place in the first three, and Craig Virgin, after that serious illness he had last year, was actually able to place amongst them. But back in the lead, there's Pat Porter, who's starting to set a pace now, uh, next to, next to uh, Lopez of, of Portugal and Salazar. There's a check on the leading group, not necessarily in terms of placing, but they're all together, separated by the, about a second. But not in that list 
is someone who should be, and that is Nat Muir of Scotland, who's just behind the pace. There's Nat Muir in the dark vest of Scotland, catching Canario of Portugal, and he's moved through very gradually indeed. Two, four, six, eight, nine, ten. He's in 11th place, and Steve Jones of Wales is 12th. The pale blue of Portugal is beginning to look a bit prominent too. You heard David Coleman talking about some of the team. Carlos Lopez right up in the front, but Bamidi is up there, Lieto is up there, and Jesus is up there, and Canario. Now, with six to score, the, uh, they're wearing blue and blue. It's a mid-blue there, you can see with Carlos Lopez. Look out for the Portuguese, because at the moment, they're having a very, very good team run. Actually, we've just been uh, checking, Ron, back through the field. We saw uh, David Lewis go through and Steve Harris. It wasn't quite possible to say just whereabouts they were in the race, but it does look as if England at the moment have got six well inside 50. You can see they're going up that hill. This course has been designed to be a real cross-country cross course, and on top of the hills and on top of the stiff, uh, the tough turns on the right and left, it's also muddy, and I think all the athletes appreciate the fact that it is a real cross-country course, but unlike the race courses they've been using recently, I don't think anyone's really finding it all that comfortable at the moment in time, and I can imagine that leading group are all beginning to hurt. Just sitting at the back of that leading group, uh, Alberto Cova, the 10,000-metre European champion, and Rob Di Castella, the Australian. So the three, six, nine away, and then a gap uh, to Canario and Nat Muir. And pushing it now is the Ethiopian. He's really driving beyond the halfway stage they are. Six laps to go, uh, six laps in all, the uh, complete length of the course, and they're at about three and a half laps. And the Ethiopian has made a break that's absolutely clear. He's got about 10 meters now from Muga of Kenya. The Ethiopian by the way is De Bella. Muga is in second place. Carlos Lopez, the former champion, third. Tom Hunt, America, four. Alberto Salazar of America in fifth place. And the leader... Actually, actually just looking at that, uh, sorry, Roderick, come across you, it's Porter, actually, not Tom Hunt, who's dropped back. And Porter's lost ground there, though, to Prieto of Spain. So just checking on the leaders again. Uh, De Bella of Ethiopia in front. Muga of Kenya second. Lopez, Portugal third. Salazar, America fourth. Prieto five. Porter six. Dave Clark of England seven. Castello, Australia eight. What's astonishing about this leader, Bekele De Bella, is that he was 10th in the junior race last year. He's only 20 years of age. The junior race is for 20 and under. He won a half marathon recently in Puerto Rico, and he's one of those that was in danger of being dropped. Bekele De Bella, who leads at the moment for Ethiopia. We've heard an awful lot about this youngster, and it looks as if it's true. David Clark going through, Costello, Cova of Italy, Canario of Portugal, Nat Muir of Scotland, then followed by another Kenyan, number 194. Kip Koic, that was, another Kenyan there, and here are the Ethiopians beginning to pack. That was Hunt of America going through, and there's the former champion in the green vest of Ireland, uh, John Tracy, just hidden away. Uh, Kevin Foster of Saltwell in England's gone through. And now Steve Harris and David Lewis of England going through together. 113 and 111, Steve Harris. And we now have a check on the team positions as the athletes go on their way towards uh, the next lap. Well, the Ethiopians have consolidated just a little. They're now ahead of the United States. And we might well mention Kenya now because they're in third place and uh, with Australia in fourth place. Those are the positions at about the midway stage and uh, the Ethiopians now are beginning to push a little bit nearer the front. It's the back three Americans that are causing the problems for the American side at the moment. The athletes are um, just going out towards the start now of their fifth lap. And how well will Gateshead have planned this? They reckon they've been running around six-minute laps. That was the beginning of the week when the course was much faster. After 24 hours of rain, it has slowed. But as they go out on their way, you can see the clock there, 24-17, uh, those six-minute laps have worked out quite well. That's exactly right. But that, what that means is that this pace is enormously fast. It means that they're keeping the going 2,000 meters in six minutes, which is very, very good running. And you can see the mud that they're going through now on this low point of the course. And to, to be running at that speed on this kind of course, I think it's amazing. And I, I think both Carlos Lopez 
and Alberto Salazar who's leading, Prieto of Spain right next to them. They look as though they're going pretty comfortable. But I would imagine now they've done three quarters of the race and the, the, the whole leading group are starting to suffer now. The race has been fast all the way and it's this last lap and a half which is really going to sort the men out from the boys. It's going to be now down to confidence. And Pat Porter, the American who won their trials and was the first the first selected for the um, for this championship from America. He's he's decided he's looking around. He's decided that he's in good form. He sees Salazar next to him, and Salazar's a great target for all the other Americans. Well, talking of the Americans, Brendan, they've got four in the first 25, and uh, Stuart Story was saying they're still up there. But the problem is they're fifth and sixth scoring men. They're back at 50 and 60, 50 and 60, and that's what this team race is all about where you can bring in your fourth, fifth, and sixth man to pack in. And that's where Ethiopia is going ahead of the Americans at the moment. Even though they've got two prominent runners in that leading pack, they really are having trouble with their back scorers. On the outside of that group, there's my inspiration, 35-year-old Carlos Lopez, because I used to run against him quite a lot recently over the last few years, and he's managed to stay longer than anyone else. But he's running really well. He's in that group. He's, he's a confident runner. He's won this championship before. In fact, he won it in 1976 which tells you how long he's been around. And he's, he's running smoothly. He's starting to cover the brakes that the Ethiopian and the Kenyan are making. And he seems to be responding quite well when they go up those stiff little climbs there. The two Africans out in front. Carlos Lopez there in third place. Pat Porter, the American champion, fourth. Prieto, five from uh, Spain. David Clark running a great race for England. He finished second uh, in the National Cross Country Championship. But the problem now is there for you to see. But they're beginning to lap some of the tired athletes and they've still got a long way to go but this is uh, promising to be one of the finest international championships we've had in years Muga of Kenya 24 years old hardly known and the Kenyans decided they would bring along here their little known home runners and not the university products from America it's 197 Muga who's got a best time for 10,000 meters of 2905 not quite sure whether that's at altitude or not but it's not world class but he's certainly looking world class today uh, Kova there, just getting slightly detached. 427 on the inside is Pat Porter. Prieto, the tiny Spaniard, 333. And Castella makes a move now, the Australian marathon runner, not a world champion. De Bela, only 20 goes with him. Muga is third. Lopez follows every attack. He's in fourth place. Prieto, five. Alberto Salazar is sixth. Still Dave Clark there in seventh place. And Porter now, the American champion, finding it a little bit hard, going the short way, though, on the inside. Well, as the race hots up, just a word for that lap runner, number 73, Syed Tumani, from the Comores Islands. The first time they've ever been in any international event that we know of in the Indian Ocean, the Comores Islands, and he made his little play. He's just been lapped. And spare a thought, too, for the Kenyans are doing so well. There he is, 73, being lapped from the Comores. Now, the Kenyan team, who are doing so well at the moment and may well be pushing USA out of second place, it's a home-based team of the Kenyans. None of their 60 or so American-based runners are here, so they're doing exceptionally well. The Kenyans at the other end of the Rift Valley from the Ethiopians are still clearly leading in this team race. Good to see that Dave Clark's got himself back to the sort of form we expect from him. He was the national cross-country champion last year. He was second at Luton uh, to Tim Hutchins a fortnight ago. I always feel, Brendan Foster, though, that we run the national championships. It's a grueling race, far too close to the international these days. It was all right in the old days when it wasn't a true world championship, and England always seemed to win. But these days, a fortnight's hardly enough time to recover. To have to run the English national two weeks before this world-class, world cross-country championships is absolutely ridiculous, really, because we can't, we're not the best in the world over the cross-country as we used to be, and we can't just mess around with it. We, if, if we're going to start figuring in this championship, then we're going to have to start thinking about moving the date of the national. But this is Dave Clark's best run ever. If he stays in this position, if he just runs along and finishes in this position, then it, it, it's a real upsurge for him because this is the first star but real world class and he's now got his head down he's not caring about he's not caring about the number of people in the group he's starting to get in amongst them but there's lopez is still there and di castella who's moved nicely right through who's already made a move once in the race and is starting to make another move with salazar sitting right outside him who's got the prospects of one of the greatest world cross country championships i've ever seen just checking on Dave Clark's position last year in the international brand. And in fact, he finished in ninth place, which was respectability uh, by any standards. 
Oh, well, that's an approximate check on the uh, leading positions, but no idea of the points. Uh, Di Costello is really forcing it now as they approach the start of what will be the final lap. Uh, De Bela of uh, Ethiopia leading alongside Costello, who's testing him all the time with a 20 euro African response. Then Lopez in the blue of Portugal, Muga of Kenya, Alberto Salazar, United States, and the tiny Spaniard Prieto with Clark at the moment going through a testing time. Now, now a check on the team positions from Stuart Story. Well, whilst the team positions haven't changed, just to give you some scores now. Ethiopia, 128. United States, 159. Kenya, 165. Australia, 192. The significance of that is that only one or two place changes could reverse that first three situations. So what a tight team race it is. Well, the team race matching the individual battle in every sense. Out they go now on what is the final lap, and somebody has got to make a move to break them. We've got an Ethiopian there, an Australian. In fact, uh, there's one. There's no two nations represented in that leading group because Porter, the American champion, is off the pace. We've got an Ethiopian, an Australian, an American, a Portuguese, a Kenyan, a Spaniard, and an Englishman. But David Clark is finding it hard. And the English team are finding it even tougher. They're back in sixth place at the moment on 285 points. The, the Salazar, Di Castella, Prieto of Spain and, and Carlos Lopez will know exactly about each other. They'll know when they expect to make a move for one another. They'll know, they'll expect that Carlos Lopez has got a good finish from Prieto, but they won't know about the Kenyan and they don't know about the Tans about the Ethiopian. So it's, it's going to be a decision here. The Lopez is moving nicely. He's sat next to the leader most of the way, but they're going to have to think about making a move. I think Salazar, if he's going to make the expected victory then he's gonna to have to do something about it very very quickly and I think Castella knows that some of these are gonna be faster finishes than he is these hills must look steeper to them every time round but this is the final lap David Clark just can't get back with that leading bunch of six he's working hard to do it uh, but that awkward gap of 10 meters has developed and Porter to the American champion some 10 meters behind Clark so it looks as if the international title will go to one of these six. Lopez has won the championship before, but for the others, it would be a new experience. Prieto of Spain, fascinating little athlete. We've seen him many, many times on the track. He was fifth in the International Cross Country Championship um, in 1981, eighth the year before that, and he is the reigning Spanish Cross Country Champion and a very good middle distance runner indeed. But he's the man at the back as gradually they start to extend again. And all the time, the one who puts in the real drive is this 20-year-old from Ethiopia, De Bela. And the man who responds to that challenge is the 36-year-old Portuguese, Carlos Lopez, although Salazar has joined him. <laughs> Lopez, the winner back in 76 on the Chepstow racecourse when staged by Wales. And here he is running quite magnificently, although Salazar said he'd try and get away, test them on the hills, would enjoy the hills, and he really is going with them and one or two are really beginning to feel the strain of these hills. The Europeans were dreading it. They said it was typical British. If it rains as well, it would suit the British. But really, it hasn't suited the British. The rest of the world has come to terms with cross-country as we know and love it. It really is uh, astonishing that uh, the stories that came out of Ethiopia about this 20-year-old have been proved absolutely right. We thought about Kadir, we thought about Yifta, we thought about Bulti, and we thought about Germa and their great names. But in fact, it's their least known member and their youngest member who's leading the team home and could still win this individual title. I think if you look through the history books, if he does win it, there's only been ever one younger winner, and that was many years ago when the race wasn't so competitive, when it was won by a 19-year-old. But still, it's not over by a long way yet. They're on this last lap. Uh, they've got the finishing funnel in their sights, but it's on the other side of the course, and they've still got some three-quarters of a mile left to run. De Bela in the green of Ethiopia. Salazar in the red of America. Lopez in the blue of Portugal. Muga in the red and white of Kenya. And Prieto is beginning to go again. This tiny Spaniard, only 25, he looks older than that in fact, and Muga is the latest one to start suffering. Just looking back behind him, Costello's been dropped, and so too David Clark. There's Costello, and there's Dave Clark back in eighth place. 
Or in fact, I think he's seventh. It'll be very much in Salazar's mind that not only does he want to win this, but most importantly, he wants to stay ahead of De Costello, who's now about 10 metres back on him, because they meet over the 26 uh, miles, 385 yards, still to come. And whoever gets ahead this time is going to have a moral advantage. And I think that lies with Salazar beyond doubt at the moment, because Costello will need a miracle to get back into this one. Well, now they must be bunching themselves, looking at each other. Who's got the sprint finish? Castella, as the leader's slow and prime themselves for the last effort. Castella's trying to get back to them, but I don't think he can possibly succeed. Just about 800 metres left, we reckon. De Bela leads for Ethiopia. Lopez follows. Muga of Kenya is coming back. Salazar struggling for speed, as he did at the finish last year when he was second. But they're going through the mud as they come round now and pass the bottom of the finishing funnel and they've got to go on a circular route of some 600 metres. Still De Bela leading, the 20-year-old from Ethiopia. Lopez, the former champion from Portugal. Olympic silver medalist in 76, ahead of Brendan Foster who got the bronze. That's Lopez 293. 197, the unknown Kenyan Buga. Then Salazar, the world number one marathon runner, and Prieto is beaten. Going round this bend, they keep on going, and then they reach the finishing funnel. They've got about 250 metres left. De Bela leads. Still Lopez waits at his shoulder. Muga going the short way, and Salazar coming on the outside. Turning the bend to come into the finishing straight, and the crowd really roaring. The race on. De Bela attacks again. Salazar is written to have no finishing speed on the near side. Plowing his way through the mud and into the funnel. 60 metres left. De Bela leads the 20-year-old. 197 is Muga. Lopez trying to get through on the inside. It's going to be a photo finish. And Lopez attacking. But De Bela gets there. Lopez second. Muga third. And Salazar four. Prieto five. Castello of Australia six. Dave Clark of England, the first Britain to finish in seventh place. Canario of Portugal is eighth. Then Porto of America in ninth place. Cova of Italy is tenth, uh, the European 10,000 metre champion. And meanwhile, we go back through the field now. And Nat Muir finishing there in about 13th or 14th place. Second Ethiopian coming through. The Americans at the moment, though, that's the second Spaniard through and the second Kenyan through. And more Ethiopians beginning to pour through. There they are all those green vests and it looks to me as if in the latest stages they've come right through to take the team race convincingly well, what a great race that was i mean that's done an enormous amount for this event to see four men come into the finishing straight after a punishing race at that pace they were going there's kevin foster just finishing now from england but to see that race as develop as such to see lopez run as well as he did at the age of 36 and to see Salazar to do everything according to his plan, only to find two Africans, and one, two of them he didn't know anything about. What a great race, what a great day we've had here. What a great organization we've had, and fittingly, we've had an event that took up the organization.